Summer at Red Butte Garden and Arboretum is lush. And here is a free date night idea. Blooming with Pride at Red Butte, co-presented with Equality Utah. Mark your calendar for Friday, June 14th between noon and 8 p.m. A showcase of artistic floral and plant displays created by local artists, as well as some family-friendly crafts. Blooming with Pride on Friday, June 14th. It is totally free, but you need to book a timed admission at redbuttegarden.org slash events. Today on CityCast Salt Lake, it's true, I drank at every bar in Salt Lake County last year, but this year I'm on to something different, neighborhood parks. From Harriman to Magna and Salt Lake City, I am visiting all 511 parks in Salt Lake County, and I'm tracking amenities like off-leash dog areas, pools, grills, and playgrounds. Here is what I think we're lacking and how I'm gonna turn all my research into a community resource. It's Tuesday, June 4th. I'm Ali Vallarta. Producer Ivana Martinez is in the host chair, and here is what Salt Lake's talking about. CityCast Salt Lake host Ali Vallarta Tell me why you are visiting every park in Salt Lake County this year. Um, because I have in part adopted this almost unwell, competitive New Year's resolution style. <laughs> of course, last year I visited every bar in Salt Lake County. This year I'm visiting every park in Salt Lake County. I think, first of all, I'm really interested in our parks right now because in the fall of 2022, Salt Lake City residents voted to pass this $85 million parks bond. And I think it, it's indicative of the fact that, like, A, Salt Lakers are actually really happy to pay for things that they care about. And B, like, okay, what does $85 million actually look like in practice in our park system? So there's that. We're getting a new park in Salt Lake City, which is another reason I I made this my every insert here quest for this year. Mm -hmm. We're getting Glendale Regional Park on the west side. Very exciting. Um, And then I think broadly, like, I had so much fun visiting every bar. It was really fun to have this, like, checklist that guided me through the year. I made a lot of friends. It was quite the journey. (laughs) Right? Like, it, like, it gamified sort of this aspect of my life in a way that I found really fun. Mm -hmm. But the shadow side of it was that, A, it was really expensive. Yeah, I don't think that was very kind to your, like, bank account at all. No, no. If I had saved all that money, I'd be in a better position, I think. Um, (laughs) And then also, it kind of just forced me to be inside a lot, Mm. which is funny because I'm actually quite an outdoor cat. So last year was my year of sitting inside And this is my year of sitting outside. (laughs) It feels like a complete 180 of this, like, from the bars to the parks. I would argue that bars and parks are kind of different sides of the same coin. Like, you're getting at a similar experience, right? Which is just, like, not being home and not being at work and gathering and having a place or an excuse to do it. Um, like one of the things I learned going to bars is like, I think a lot of people don't necessarily go to bars to drink. Like, I think it's more about just like being in a setting that condones socializing and makes it easy. Mm. And so I think we probably utilize our parks in similar ways, right? It's where we meet. It's where we break up. It's where we celebrate. It's where we mourn. It's where we cry. We do it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I well, I do have a question about that. Have you found yourself having a lot of interactions on this journey? Like, have you socialized a lot while you've been on this parks journey? Less so, and I think part of the reason is because of like how I'm visiting parks. I'm like taking a lot of photos and like filling out my little survey. I kind of look creepy, <laughs> <laughs> like a little detective on the side, and you're like, so. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I'm taking a photo of the playground and people's parents are like, why are you taking a photo of the playground? I'm like, oh, uh, it's for research. <laughs> um, but I have had some interactions for sure, though I will say like 
People definitely are showing up in a park less with the intention to make friends there. Generally, you like go with your crew to the park and you have a planned yes. activity. Mm-hmm. But I've had a lot of fun. I've definitely had a lot of fun. And you know who is absolutely loving this journey? My dog. Oh, because yes. he got left home <laughs> for a lot of late nights in bars last year. And yeah. this year he's like, I'm sorry, we're going to 10 different parks today. He's my like, nose let's go. Is, <laughs> my nose is off the charts. Yeah. Okay, so I have to ask, how are you defining a park? Because like what qualifications are you looking for to be to to count as a park? This is a difficult question. It's sort of like defining a chair, right? Mm. I think for me a park well, in gathering the data for this, it's not like going to the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Services and saying, "Can I have a spreadsheet of all your bars?" So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, going to cities asking for a list of their parks. So I'm kind of letting the institution define what a park is for me in a lot of ways. Okay. Um, it generally has park in the name, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I think like patch of grass is key. There's got to be a patch of grass. It can also be astroturf. Um, Like Promise Park in South Salt Lake. But like Patch of Grass, some sort of like seating-ish, but not necessarily. I... This is so hard, Ivana. I actually think the only answer I have for you is there's a patch of grass. <laughs> and like in some way it's zoned off. In some way it's districted as its own section, right? So like mm-hmm. a median, though it's a patch of grass, is not a park. <laughs> but like... I don't know. Ask me in a year. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll circle back and be like, has your, what does your thesis look like at this point? (laughs) (laughs) There's got to be a textbook definition somewhere, but. Yeah. Another question that I have for you is when do you officially count a park off of your list? Like, are you there for 10 minutes and then you're like, okay, I've been to this park. I've seen the sites or like, how do you count a park? I try and cover all the ground it has to offer. Which has been really fun and led to some surprising discoveries. For Mm -hmm. example, I was up at the 11th Street Park in the way upper avenues on Friday night for sunset. And so normally the way I would utilize that park is like I would go play tennis and I would leave. Mm -hmm. Or I would go like run my dog around in circles in the big field and I would leave. But because now what I'm trying to do is really understand what these parks have to offer – I followed all the little kind of secret trails that like branch off from the park. And that ended up taking me like kind of all the way to this other little part of the neighborhood. And like I've been finding actually out how much bigger some of these parks are than what we perceive them to be. Because if we're driving by, we see like basketball court, tennis court, and we're like, yeah, that's the whole enchilada. But really, a lot of them I'm finding have like these kind of little trail networks and stuff. Mm. So covering more ground. So yeah, like once I feel like I've done a good lap, I would compare it to like, you know, when you go to Target and you're like, I'm going to take a lap and then you Mm -hmm. end up going kind of down every aisle. Yeah. That's what I'm doing at parks. Okay. (laughs) What a strategy. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get into some of the parks that you visited so far. Mm. What are some of the best things that you've seen? Okay, so there's a park in South Salt Lake called Bickley Park. And I should just say, full disclosure, I have been to all the parks in Cottonwood Heights and Mill Creek and like half of the parks in South Salt Lake and like maybe a quarter to an eighth of the parks in Salt Lake City right now. So I've not covered a ton of ground yet. This is the kickoff. Like summer's finally here. But Bickley Park in South Salt Lake has this amazing playground and it's not very big mm-hmm. but one of the things that I loved about it is that it has musical instruments oh, so you fun. can like play the drums like oh. you can like play the xylophone which is an element of sensory play that I didn't even really expect to find and it seems so obvious because swinging or jumping or sliding or like that kind of physical play isn't for everyone yeah so I thought that was really nice and then they also have a mister in the middle of the playground that just like miss water on you which is so pleasant so I had a blast there okay that is so key especially because we're entering this week that's like pretty high 80s maybe like we're hitting the 90s I think and to have a place to cool off at a park oh my god oh yeah it is incredible And nothing worse than an overheated kid just like having a tantrum, you know, like you can kind of stand them under the mister and just calm everything, (laughs) get them out of the red zone, right? Yeah. 
I also went to this park in Cottonwood Heights called Crestwood, which I know I've already raved about in our guide to June. Mm -hmm. But it had these, it has a pool, which I love, but it also had these like really great picnic areas and they're kind of sanctioned off. So you have your own little space with a picnic table and then there's a side table which I think of as like for preparing food or if you bring your own grill, you could set it on that side table. But like there's this one picnic table there that is two times the length of a normal picnic table. And I just think it's a party waiting to happen. So I love that. Like I love seeing places you could throw a good party. I went up to the Lindsay Gardens Pavilion. I'd never been there like all the way up to the pavilion before. Where's that? It has sinks. That's also in the avenues. Okay. It has little sinks. So like if you have a birthday party there, you can wash hands. Oh my God. Or like fill a pitcher of iced tea or just some of the like simple amenities that make life so much easier. And then I will say like, I really underestimated the popularity of pickleball. I expected (laughs) the tennis court to pickleball court ratio to be much more in favor of tennis. Hmm. I think tennis is making a comeback now. So that might recalibrate thanks to challengers. Mm -hmm. But um, pickleball, like a lot of these new parks, they don't even have a tennis court. They just have a pickleball court. Like it's insane. It is a hot Mm -hmm. sport here in Utah. I think we are like one of the leading states in the nation for playing pickleball here in Utah. So that's not surprising to me. I will say I am a little late to the game on it, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering, like, what are the, some of the things that you're seeing in terms of amenities that we're lacking in these parks? So already I've been several places where the water fountain is out. And I think that's mm. really unfortunate because yeah. if – especially like a lot of cities will list on their website what amenities a park has. And so Mm -hmm. it sets this expectation that there is a water fountain. Like I ran to a park on Saturday and like I had brought my dog and it was kind of midday. It was a warm day, but I ran to a dog park. And so it had said there was like a water fountain there, which usually the dog parks have like a little dog bowl section of the water fountain. And it was there Mm -hmm. and my dog was so hot and I was so hot and we walked up and we pressed the button and nothing came out. And I was like, damn it. Like, (laughs) I'm kind of stuck now. Like, I didn't bring a water bottle. I don't have water for my dog. I now have to do the cupping method where I fill it at like this other place and let him drink out of my hands. Like, it, it is frustrating Always, especially when it's like taxpayer funded, Mm -hmm. when you get somewhere and a resource isn't available, right? So I would say like making sure our water fountains are up and running matters, especially as we get into a hot summer. Also for a lot of people in our city, like they rely on that, you know, whether or not they're on a run. So I would say that um, play areas that are toddler friendly. Someone actually who listens to this show reached out to me about this and asked me to keep an eye on it. And so I have been kind of tracking on this journey, like, oh, like, could a two-year-old have fun on this playground? Or is it all slide and monkey bars, you know? And then the other one is, like, a lot of our parks are ADA accessible on a technicality. You know, you can, if you're using a wheelchair, for example, like, you could take a lap. But is there anything else fun to do, right? Like, do the, are there ADA accessible picnic tables? Mm. Or even to be able, like, if you're using a wheelchair to get into the pavilion picnic area, sometimes the tables go right up to the shoulder of that pavilion and there isn't a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. So I've been trying to kind of keep an eye on that and think about that experience too, which I'm not a toddler. I don't use a wheelchair. So it's like, I don't know for sure, but I'm just noticing that it's a lot of the same over and over again. It feels like the same blueprint over and over again in some parks. Salt Lake, how about adding a staycation to your summer bucket list? Escape to the mountains this summer for sunny days and cool nights at one of the Stein Collection properties in Park City. You've got the Chateau Deer Valley, Stein Erickson Lodge, and Stein Erickson Residences. Now stay with me, because I know what you're thinking. Allie, the Stein Erickson? I don't have that kind of dough. But through June, all these hotels are offering a special rate for Utah locals. At Stein Erickson, you get globally ranked five-star luxury. You pay $249 a night. 
Bring the family and get out of sweltering Salt Lake heat. Enjoy lush mountain views, refreshing pools, poolside milkshakes, fireside s'mores, and family-friendly dining. This summer, Park City is ours. Call for details, 866-996-0034, or visit steinlodge.com to book your stay. It feels like your every bar project was a lot more about vibes, but this park project is more of a fact-finding mission. How are you going about it, and how are you rating parks? So one of the hardest things about this project so far has been just finding all the parks. Mm. And that's because, you know, I love Salt Lake County focused missions as opposed to Salt Lake City. And I think that's because it's such a fun way to see other parts of the valley. I think a lot of us like recreate in other parts of the county Mm -hmm. and or we have family there or whatever. Right. Yeah. So what that means is that I've had to reach out to all 23 cities in Salt Lake County and say, hi, can I have a list of all your parks? How many do you Um, have on your (laughs) list? (laughs) 511 total parks as of now. But I don't even know how truthful that number is because what I found is like every city and the county has a different way of managing and digitizing its data. Mm. So like if you reach out to Salt Lake County and say, can I have a list of all the parks in Salt Lake County? They're going to say, sure, but these are just the parks we manage. So these are like the big regional parks that we are responsible for cleaning up and that we fund and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So then you reach out to a city and they might say like, yeah, I've got a spreadsheet for you with the address and name of all our parks. Or they might say, here's a PDF of a map of all our parks to which I say, Uh -uh. Sir, it's 2024. What am I supposed to do with a PDF of a map? Like get a ruler out and measure the distance between them? So (laughs) it has been a real challenge to get all of this information. And what what I learned immediately was like all these cities are organizing information in their own way. Mm. All that to say, that led me to thinking about this project a little differently. And like, instead of it just being about Ali Vallarta is gonna go see all these things and tell you like what she saw, mm-hmm. I want to make it more of a data project. So I've made this little Google form that I fill out when I go to every park. And it's a bunch of yes or no questions. Like, is there a pool? Is there a splash pad? Is there lighting after dark? Is there a playground or an off-leash dog area? And then I submit that and it populates a spreadsheet with all this data from all these parks. And I am working with someone who specializes in turning data into maps to hopefully, fingers crossed, at the end of this journey, be able to share with our listeners and our readers and everyone in Salt Lake County an interactive map. So if you live in Harriman or Cottonwood Heights or Magna, you'll be able to go in and just click through like what you're looking for. I want uh, there to be a water fountain. I want there to be bathrooms. I want there to be tennis courts. Mm -hmm. And it will show you the parks closest to you and all over the county that have those things. It's weird to think that this like doesn't exist and maybe it does, but this will be my version of it. And it's kind of a love letter, I think, to these spaces. So that's the plan. I think it's an amazing community resource, especially if you're a Salt Laker and you're like, well, what park do I want to take my kid today? Or like, where should I bring my friends from out of town and like maybe plan a picnic? I do want to say that not all of these parks are created equal. And Mm. especially with our east west side divide. I just recently read an article in the Tribune that detailed how differently your proximity to nature can look just based off of your income and your demographics. Mm -hmm. You're driving all over this county, not just Salt (laughs) Lake, like this entire county, like hearing you say 511 parks, that's bonkers. It's not normal. No, (laughs) no, absolutely not. But I'm wondering how you're thinking about those other factors in terms of accessing and recreating in these areas. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the thing that was interesting about that Trib story about who has access is that it was, I think, more about like truly wild spaces and less about parks themselves. Like, mm-hmm. can you get into a canyon, right? Can yeah. you jump into a lake? Um, but yeah, I mean, the score disparity was like, you know, 
96 is the score if you live in Mill Creek. Four is the score if you live in West Valley. Yeah, that was crazy. There's um, an organization called the Trust for Public Land, and they have put together these really good maps that do show all the different green spaces, presumably parks, Mm -hmm. um, in an area. And if you look at Salt Lake County, it actually feels a little bit more equal than you might even expect, given when we look at like how our east and west are divided by like air quality. It's so jarring. Yeah, this is a little bit less jarring. They find that 82% of people in Salt Lake live within a 10 minute walk of a park. So I think that like, especially in places where we're seeing urban sprawl, we have done a pretty good job creating park spaces probably because parks like make your home more valuable right (laughs) so it's like a I mean there's like sort of a sneaky real estate element to it but absolutely like in terms of trees and green space it's our city is not divided equally and there's redlining I think there's lack of like focus civic engagement there's all different kind of reasons that lead to that Mm -hmm. um I'm hoping that by the end of this journey, I have like a better sense of what's available where. But we already know, like we've been told, like there's what only one pickleball court on the west side of Salt Lake City. So so in and of itself, if we're talking about like something that just feels so ubiquitous and yet it isn't, then that says a lot. It does. And I think especially since, you know, like parks can be such a third space for a lot of people. Right. Like it's not just a place. It's I think in my mind when I'm thinking about parks, they're in the same lane as like libraries. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they're free and they are places that you can get to just relax and hang out. And there isn't anything, you know, Mm -hmm. you just show up. You mentioned the 85 million parks bond that Salt Lake City residents voted to fund in 2022. And I have to ask you, why are our parks worth spending on? I think like. So you brought up this idea of of third spaces, which I think we should define. So it's a sociological notion that we have kind of three spaces where we spend our time in our modern lives. Our first space is home. Mm -hmm. Our second space is work. And our third space is insert thing here, right? It could be bars. It could be coffee shops. It could be parks. And we're seeing kind of a decline in third spaces in their availability and in how we use them. And I think a lot of that has to do with like rising cost of living, like just chilling in a coffee shop all day is expensive It is, or like going to concerts or whatever else. Finding ways to socialize can feel equally expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's so incredible about parks is that they're free, right? You don't have to pay by the hour to use a playground. You don't have to rent a picnic table necessarily. You can rent a pavilion. I learned you can rent a game of tug of war from Salt Lake County for $6, which is one of the most incredible things I've learned this year. (laughs) But um, we can access them for free. And so I think that like when we think about making a general investment collectively as a city. When we pool all our dollars, they can go so much further. You know, $85 million towards like one housing development, $85 million across our city for all of us to have access to better recreation and Mm -hmm. third spaces that are fun. I think that's really valuable. And I also think like (sighs) trees make us better like, yeah I know that's like <laughs> such a silly thing to say no isn't like, there like a study out there that like no there's like a study out there that if you like hug a tree you like have more years of life or something like that it's, <laughs> I love that <laughs> yeah I mean like there are positive health outcomes and positive mental health outcomes to being able to be spend time in green space mm-hmm. and just because we choose to live in urban environments doesn't mean that we should therefore be deprived of trees and green spaces. Trees make our city cooler in the summer. Um, They provide a safe place to get cool for people who don't necessarily have somewhere else to get cool. So I think there are a million reasons why parks are valuable. But the short version is just I think a lot of life happens there. And I think like 
even before I started spending all this time in parks, I never really fully appreciated how much time I already did spend in parks. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's been funny about this journey is like, unlike bars where I have to had to very purposefully be like, I'm going to X, I'm going to Y. It's like, I'll just find myself in a park because so much of our lives happens in parks. And so yeah. that's been a beautiful reminder of like the ways that they show up even when we don't plan maybe to go there or be there. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I have to be honest with you, Ali. When you say 511 parks, a little part of me is like, oh my God, how is she going to do it? Because I have so much faith in you. Like I saw you check those <laughs> bars off of your spreadsheet and that was like in the roundhouse, I want to say like around 200 and something, like 230, 211. 216. Yeah. yeah. And that was, I got it, like that was a big triumph for you when you did that. <laughs> 511 Depends who you parks. ask, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here, Ivana Martinez here, it's saying that it was a huge triumph. Um, but you're not an eighth through this list and it is June. So mm. how are you going to get this done? Okay, so ye of little faith, <laughs> I I will say this is a bigger lift. And there are mornings where I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, like <laughs> I can never, I can never leave town. Like I can't take a summer vacation because that's like a hundred parks, you know? Yeah. Um, but I will say I love a challenge. I do feel like doing the bar thing really proved to me that I can do this. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly easier to knock off multiple parks in a day. Like I did 10 parks in Cottonwood Heights a couple Fridays ago. Oh my God. 10 bars is just a very different scenario. There's <laughs> that less makes drinking for a involved. very different <laughs> evening, right? Yeah. Um, and so there's that. Mm -hmm. But I will say, God, the more that people say that they think I can't do this, the more it fuels the fire. So I'm I'm ready to rock. I'm all parks all day. And I will say a lot of my friends are super down. So that helps. Like people have been reaching out and been like, let's hit a park. Because it's cheap, free fun. Why not? CityCast Salt Lake host, Ali Vallarta, best of luck to you. Thank you. I'll see you out there. If you want to follow this Every Park journey with me, find me on Instagram at Every Park SLC. I'll be reporting back on this show and in our newsletter, Hey Salt Lake. For now, I'll see you on the tennis court or kicking a broken water fountain. If you see me, definitely say hi. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. Thank you to producer Ivana Martinez for hosting. We will be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city.